Captain, United States Navy, arriving. Fleet readiness centers arriving. Naval Air Forces arriving. Naval Air Systems Command arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Retire the colors. Lord God, thank you that your divine word in the book of Psalms speaks of a voice upon the waters, that your voice of glory is like a thunder over many waters, and that you mount the flaming cherubim and you fly through the heaven, soaring on the wings of the wind. Thank you for Rear Admiral Paul Soul. Thank you for Captain Michael Zarkowski, have had experiences of that kind of power and might in the work that they do. Giver of all life and almighty Lord our God, today we come to you with deep wonder and awe in your presence. We come with a spirit of gratitude, so grateful for the gifts we could enumerate each and every day. What an honor to call upon you once again on behalf of our military community at Pax Naval Station and to know with a certitude of faith that you are in our midst even now as I speak. Lord, we lift up. 
Rear Admiral Paul Soul and his wife, Cap, place them in the sheltering care at this time of new beginnings and guard also under your pinions, under the shadow of your wings, Captain Michael Zarkowski and his wife, Janet. Lord, they both mentally prepare themselves to serve you now in equally new and challenging positions. May this change of command ceremony redound to your honor and may our words ring true. May our sentiments be expressed with conviction and authority. Give us all attentive ears that we might present once again a great wisdom of heart. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Will the guests please be seated and military uncover? On behalf of Rear Admiral Paul Soule and Captain Michael Zarkowski, I would like to welcome all flag officers, general officers, senior executives, distinguished guests, and family and friends to today's ceremony. Thank you for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Paul Crossclax, Commander, Naval Air Systems Command. So they've got this little X up here. I guess that's so we know where to stand. Okay. Right here. No, that'd be bad for pictures. I'm sorry. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, this, is a, this is a great day for Fleet Readiness Center. It's a great venue for a change of command here at Test Pilot School. Appreciate them uh, making the facility available to us this morning. It was about eight years ago, um, eight years and about a week, uh, when I took over as Com FRC. And I got to be honest with you, most of you probably already know this, I had no idea what I was getting into. I was a brand new Frock One Star, Zark. Um, I, I, had, I knew nothing about FRCs. In fact, I had asked Admiral Benlet, who was NAV Air at the time, uh, to help me understand exactly what this COM FRC thing was, because it was just in the process of being stood up at the time. Uh, but it turned out I was in pretty good company because most of the rest of the Navy did not know what COM FRC was at that point either. Um, and I can tell you that things have changed tremendously uh, in the last seven or eight years in terms of how the fleet recognizes the work that COMFRC does. The organization has matured dramatically since then, and one of the major reasons for the, the maturation of the organization is sitting on the stage behind me in, in Rear Admiral Seoul. At the time, he was uh, exo Seoul down at Fleet Readiness Center Southeast. Uh, he was always willing to provide the uh, the not knowing uh, boss with uh, pearls of wisdom, uh, free advice if you will. But what he usually wanted to talk about more than anything else was either how much or how little Hornet functional check flight time he was able to accumulate in the previous week. Um, usually it was not enough, but that was usually a topic of conversation. But anyway, when Paul would drop those little pearls of wisdom on the floor, I made sure that I walked around and picked them up stuck them in my pocket because invariably I found use for them later on during my tour. Now you all know that Paul, Paul then became uh, the CEO down there at Southeast and obviously has spent three years uh, in command. Uh, so he has left an indelible mark on this organization. Uh, organizationally, but more importantly uh, in his passion for the people, for all of you that are here today, and for the dedication of the organization to supporting the fleet. Uh, that is a legacy that will live long after uh, that he moves on to another job uh, and will certainly support uh, Zark in, in uh, everything that he does. So, come a long way in the internal organization, but the thing that I noticed when I came back to Nav Air about nine months ago was the external outreach that Admiral Soul has uh, brought to the organization. Um, the level of senior oversight, the level of opportunity that he's had to come and explain himself uh, to senior Navy and Marine Corps leadership uh, was beyond, well beyond anything that I ever experienced. 
Uh, during my time as COMFRC, I can count on this many fingers the number of times I had to brief Admiral Vinlet as nav air. I can count on this many fingers the times I had to brief my other boss, uh, Admiral Kilkline, who was the air boss at that point. We didn't have M2E BODs, we didn't have FCRCs, I didn't have to go see RDA about strike fighter inventory management, didn't have to brief the service chiefs on readiness. All things that LJ has had the chance to excel in doing. And he set a pretty good standard for external communications, as many, as you, many of you know. He's established quite a reputation as a very steady, very confident, very knowledgeable, and somewhat silver-tongued devil when he's briefing senior leadership. That's the reputation you have. Some of us know differently. Because the truth is that most of the folks that he ended up briefing had absolutely no clue what he was talking about. He'd use some big words that they didn't understand. He'd use a bunch of acronyms that had no vowels in them. And as long as he spoke confidently and with a sense of urgency, he could talk about concerto and CCPM and ILSMS and MOUSE. And it just was, wow, that LJ, he's really good. He knows exactly what he's talking about. And you can see their heads going up and down. And the rest of us are sitting in the room going, I can't believe he's getting away with that load of crap again. But he did, and he, he's done a masterful job in, uh, in leading this team here. Uh, just a completely masterful job. Because what folks fail to realize is that 80, 90% of what you all have been doing during his tenure has gone off without a hitch. And nobody reads about it, nobody hears about it because everything was just executing in accordance with the plan. And it was that 10% that gets all the attention. Uh, rightly so, it's a big issue, they're big issues. But in the main, this team has executed so well over the last three years, it's simply eye-watering what you have done to support the fleet, and it's due to his leadership. So LJ, we're gonna miss you here, uh, but I certainly wish, uh, uh, look forward to working with you in your next job down at OpTev 4 as you relieve Zoil the end of next month. Zark, so you know the shoes you gotta fill. You know all about that external communication now. You've got to sit there and shake your head as well and wonder how he, how he got away with it. But you know the challenges, you know the opportunities, and I think you know more than anything else that you've got a great team that will have your back in everything that you do. So we're looking forward to working together. Every confidence that you will continue to lead this team uh, to new level, levels of, uh, of support for the fleet. So now, I was given 30 seconds this morning. Marsha, where are you? I might have exceeded my time. You've had to listen to me prattle well past that. My real job today was to introduce our guest speaker, and I'm going to do that. Uh, I've known Vice Admiral Shoemaker since 1978. Uh, we both entered the Naval Academy on the same day and were put in the same company. Uh, so we got to know each other reasonably well back then. I can tell you he was a leader even back then uh, for our company, 35th company. And if you're reading his bio, and uh, JR, I've been watching you, and you've been reading his bio while I was talking, knock it off. But if you read his bio, you can tell that he's been a leader at every level of our Navy, and certainly uh, now is our, our leader at uh, Commander Naval Air Forces. So our paths diverged since we were midshipmen, and now they've converged again in our current roles, and I couldn't be happier to, uh, to have that opportunity to work closely with him. Naval Aviation right now is extremely fortunate to have him as our Air Boss, and we're very fortunate to have him here today as our guest speaker. So please join me in welcoming our Air Boss, Admiral Shoemaker. All right, it was great to be here. Um, you know, we were marshalling the families in the uh, paraloft, and it's amazing as you look around in there to all the memorabilia, most of which has probably been up in space and come back and now hangs in there. It's just a really, you know, first time really for me to be here in the TPS hangar and to look at all the airplanes, but uh, really neat, uh, neat to be back. So GA, thanks uh, for that very kind introduction, and, and thanks for allowing me to share the dais today um, as we recognize LJ's great work. Last time we were together on stage, I was pinch hitting for CNO as you and Decoy were turning over. And I was wearing a set of chokers that I borrowed from the mannequin at the Navy Exchange. Sad part is that one actually fit better than my current set. As I said, it's great to be back in Pax River. 
um, Home and Naval Air Systems Command is so much of the great work that is going on inside the Naval Aviation Enterprise to recover readiness across the force and improve the way we generate that readiness. And your FRCs, LJ, clearly play an absolutely critical role in both of those efforts. More on that in a few minutes. Let me welcome again uh, our distinguished guests, fellow flag and general officers, senior executives, uh, community leaders, industry partners, program managers, um, FRC commanding officers, and the rest of the NAV Air team. Also, a warm welcome to the Sol and Zarkowski families and friends. That last category should capture just about everyone. You all honor LJ and Kat and Zark and, uh, and Janet with your presence today. It's been a busy couple of months for all of us up on the stage, and LJ, I'm glad schedules worked out so that I could um, keep this on track today. I started the week down in Norfolk on USS George Washington as Naval Aviation said goodbye to one of our now legendary leaders, Admiral Bill Shortney Gortney, who retired after an extraordinary 39-year career. I spent most of Tuesday on Gerald R. Ford, our fleet's newest and most capable carrier. Then in the Pentagon yesterday, we were more impressive um, enterprise work is going on inside N-98, uh, Naval Aviation's primary resource sponsor. But I am especially excited and honored uh, to finish this week on the East Coast with today's change of command ceremony to recognize Rear Admiral Paul L.J. Soule for his tremendous service as Commander of Fleet Readiness Centers, where he works for me, and as Assistant Nav Air Commander for Logistics and Industrial Operations, his second hat working for Admiral Grossglags, and to welcome his relief and trusted former Vice Commander, um, Rear Admiral Select Mike Zark Zarkowski. While changes of command signify important events in our professional careers, these ceremonies are, are also about our families and friends, and rightfully so. They provide an opportunity for us to acknowledge those who have supported us during our careers, most especially our families. I understand LJ and Zark may have something special planned to recognize their extended families, but I would like to personally acknowledge and thank Kat Soule and Janet Zarkowski. Two amazing ladies who have partnered with LJ and Zark for many of their years in the Navy. Thank you both for your selfless service and many sacrifices as you've supported your husband's careers, especially demanding in the flag ranks. And after meeting the Soul Kids, Luke, Aaron, and Kate, and Matt and Ryan Zarkowski, it's clear you both have raised wonderful families. For the kids, I know how proud your dads are of you, and I hope you feel the same way about the bright future they've helped create for you with their naval service. It's great to have all of you here today to celebrate this special event. Ladies and gentlemen, today's change of command ceremony is one of our oldest Navy traditions. In a few minutes, Admiral Soul and Admiral Select Zarkowski will read their orders, exchange salutes, and report to me that they've transferred command of our fleet readiness centers and Nav Air duties. By this one seemingly simple act, ultimate authority for command will shift from one officer to the next, according to regu Navy regulations and in front of their assembled sailors as has been done countless times before in our Navy's history. Before we get to that important moment in the ceremony, though, I'd like to add my perspective as Air Boss to the accolades Admiral Grossglags already mentioned in his opening remarks. First, G8, I want to thank you for your tremendous leadership since taking over from decoy. You've kept, this, you've kept his future vision for this organization intact while helping me focus this team and the entire Naval Aviation Enterprise on the important readiness challenges we face across the Navy. Thank you. If you consider the current fiscal environment and the resourcing challenges facing our Navy now and in the years ahead, and the fact that we already own nearly three quarters of the aircraft that will populate our flight lines and our flight decks well into the middle of the next decade, the sustainment work that our fleet readiness centers do is absolutely critical to the relevance of our force. And those naval aviation forces, our carrier strike groups and expeditionary squadrons remain in very high demand around the world because of the visible deterrent presence and flexible response options they provide to our fleet commanders and our combatant commanders. Right now, we have four carry strike groups forward deployed. In the Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, Eisenhower and Air Wing 3 are relieving Harry S. Truman and Air Wing 7 and will continue operations against ISIS uh, from the Med and eventually moving back to the Arabian Gulf. At the same time, Ronald Reagan and Air Wing 5 and John C. Stennis and Air Wing 9 are, are conducting dual carrier strike group operations just outside the first island chain in the Western Pacific. The first time we've done that in a while. Additionally, 16 expeditionary helicopter and maritime patrol squadrons or detachments are operating around the world right now. And three additional carriers and air wings are starting the workup cycle. That means we have to provide sufficient aircraft re resources for seven of our nine air wings to conduct their training requirements in the months ahead. 
and I didn't even mention a similar demand for the Marine Corps aviation units worldwide. So a decade and a half of near continuous combat operations and an absolute necessity to reset the force in stride, as Admiral Swift, our Pacific Fleet Commander often says, requires that we balance the, that current demand signal with an enterprise-wide readiness recovery effort. And as I mentioned earlier, this is where NAVAIR and Rear Admiral Sowell's Fleet Readiness Centers in particular play such a critical role. Lieutenant General Dog Davis, my counterpart from Marine Corps Aviation, and I have twice briefed CNO and Commandant on our readiness recovery plan. Not surprisingly, the lines of effort we are pursuing across every type model series are based on the extensive work this NAVAIR team and our FRCs have done to manage our legacy strike fighter inventory. Two of the main efforts fall squarely on our readiness centers. The first is depot production, the deep maintenance we can't conduct at the squadron level, but is absolutely necessary to get the full life, uh, service life out of our platforms, or in the case of the legacy F-18s, extend them well beyond what our engineers ever, ever imagined. Managing in-service repairs, that repair work that it can't be accomplished by our squadron maintainers, is the second key area where our FRCs are providing critical support to our warfighters. And although the reduction of ISRs across the force has been significant, we have to continue looking for every way possible to consistently sustain those lower ISR numbers and improve our capacity and predictability for depot production. As I sat with the talented FRC leadership team during a brief yesterday, I fully realized there's much more detailed work to be done to realize those two goals. But I know that team, along with every one of LJ's FRC commanding officers, and the dedicated engineers and artisans that make things happen every day in their depots and on our flight lines, get it, and are totally committed to improving readiness in every type model series aircraft we fly. In fact, since the first brief General Davis and I gave to our two service chiefs, we've reduced flight line readiness gaps by 54 aircraft. That's 54 more flyers today than we had at the beginning of the fiscal year. LJ, I attribute that in large part to your extraordinary leadership and vision over the last three years, and the credibility, passion, and enthusiasm you brought to every one of your FRC business lines. You're exactly the right officer to lead our recovery from the detrimental impacts of sequ that sequestration had on your depot workforce, and to develop a targeted hiring plan to get us back on the right path. Additionally, your extensive knowledge of critical chain project management and commitment to reinstituting reinstit that process across your organization is paying huge dividends today. And to, you and, your, and to you and your flag and general officer partners on the engineering, maintenance, and supply chain management team, Dino, now Shane, Paul V, Alan Day, and Maz, thank you. Each of our senior NA leaders sees the exceptional value that team has added to achieving flight line readiness at the best possible cost. Lastly, a huge thanks to you and Dennis for the ongoing work to deliver your FRC Vision 2020 which I am confident will give us a more streamlined, agile, and responsive organization in the future. LJ, I know after you graduated from TPS and reported to China Lake, you had visions of being our first, one of our first Super Hornet flight testers when you received a call from the detailer, I assume, who said we needed someone to take the F-18 program at the Aviation Depot in North Island. I think your comment was, the depot, that's where planes go to die. Well, you took that job, and I think it paved the way for a very successful progression through the depot ranks to the commander job you relinquished today. And I'll tell you I'm going to, and I'll tell you I'm going to miss your artfully covering all the high level FRC production briefs. As G8 mentioned, you have a silver tongue and a way of briefing, sometimes not great news that would make Obi-Wan Kenobi envious. In fact, I think you've taken a page from the most recent Star Wars movie when the wise one says, "Luke, or in your case, Admiral Swift and Admiral Davidson, you're going to find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our point of view." You clearly had them mesmerized, and I hope you've trained Zark in the ways of the FRC dark side. Seriously, LG, I know I speak for Dog Davis and our other senior NAE leaders when I say thank you. Again, for your brilliant, innovative leadership as FRC commander and an outstanding, as an outstanding provider for all of naval aviation and as a key member of our NAVAIR team. I know you will certainly be missed around these parts as you head down to Norfolk to command the Operational Test and Evaluation Force, but I know you're the right guy for that job in a few years. I think we'll see you back here again. Well done, my friend. To our new commander, Zark, you also are a proven leader with a wealth of experience and benefits of watching one of the greatest Jedi FRC, FRC masters in action, and I have complete trust and confidence in your abilities. Although we transitioned from an AEDO to an AMDO today, I'm consistently amazed at the way G8 manages his talent and grooms exactly the right officers for his NAVAIR leadership positions. Your selfless commitment to excellence 
and teamwork make you the perfect choice to build upon LJ's legacy and to put your personal touch on this command's future. That said, I'm still trying to figure out why there is a regular, why there is a painting of you with a few other regulars, I assume, above the fireplace in the world-famous I-Bar in, in, in North Island. And I think you get an aid in this job, so it won't be so obvious when you pass on the driving duties again. Kidding aside, congratulations, Zark. I look forward to working closely with you and your FRC team in the future. Earlier, I mentioned the insatiable demand for naval, air, naval forces we see right now because of the value we provide. But that cha the challenge that lies ahead of us is how we continue to sustain the capacity to generate those forces and ensure they are going forward with the right capabilities to operate where needed, all in a fiscal environment characterized by ever-increasing uncertainty. This is a tall order indeed with lots of choices and trade-offs ahead. As the Air Boss, my number one goal is to ensure our warfighters have the resources they need to focus on warfighting first, to be ready to operate forward, and be successful when we ask them to sail or fly in harm's way. Our fleet readiness centers and the larger NAV Air organization, without question, are the most important enablers of the readiness required to do that. And I couldn't be more proud of the way the NAV Air team, uniform and civilian, continues to perform with quiet professionalism and excellence. You are making a difference every day. Thank you, and may God continue to bless our great Navy and nation and the sailors, civilians, and families who serve both so faithfully. Vice Admiral Shoemaker will now present Rear Admiral Soule with his end of tour award. Guests, please remain seated. Will the military please rise and cover for the presentation of the award? Attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit, Gold Star in lieu of third award to Rear Admiral Paul A. Soule, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation for exceptionally meritorious conduct and the performance of outstanding service as Commander, Fleet Readiness Centers, and Assistant Commander for Logistics and Industrial Operations, Naval Air Systems Command, Patuxent River, Maryland, from August 2013 through June 2016, where Admiral Sol brilliantly led 18,000 civilian, military, and contracted personnel at eight Fleet Readiness Centers and managed a budget of $4.3 billion in readiness, maintenance, repair, and overhaul with a total of 8,483,281 labor force hours and 1.16 billion in cost, His emphasis on process improvement and maintenance integration resulted in the delivery of 1,434 airframes, 4,294 engines and modules, 155,255 components, 2,151 pieces of support equipment, and 9,060 airframe in-service repairs which achieved a 35% reduction in back orders from fiscal year 2014 to 2015 and improved weapon system availability for eight type model aircraft. His involvement in Commander Fleet Readiness Center's Aviation Rapid Action Team ensured the development and improvement of more than 100 repair processes, enhanced Fleet Readiness Center capabilities, and resulted in $13.1 million in cost of avoidance while improving readiness and lowering costs per flight hours. By his dynamic direction, keen judgment, and loyal devotion to duty, Rear Admiral Sol reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, R.L. Thomas, Vice Admiral, United States Navy, Director, Navy Staff. Hey, um, I've got a number of special thank yous uh, and one brief thought for you. I'm keeping it short, not because anyone might have a financial bet on exactly how long this ceremony might last, but rather General Mazziello and Todd Balaz and some others need to leave promptly at 11 o'clock to get a very important B-22 review with Lieutenant General Davis up at Tyson's Corners. I don't want them to be late. The mission waits for no one. 
When Zark and I first talked about this change of command, we knew we wanted to accomplish two things. Get the naval aviation message out to the crowd here at PAX, directly from NAE leadership if we could, and number two, avoid the pitfalls of appearing to play favorites between your two bosses. Thank you both for attending. Air Boss, thanks for those kind words. You set the direction every day for us. For those of you who don't know, the Air Boss can be very direct. Early on in my relationship with him, it came out loud and clear. LJ, you're too reactive. Your FRC teams are fighting too many fires. I can't defend what I can't see. I need you to be proactive, better yet, predictive. Got it. Admiral Grossclay. From day one leading Nav Air, your focus on readiness is music to the ears of the Fleet Readiness Centers. We're proud to be on your team. For those of you who don't know Vice Admiral Grossklag that well, let me tell you, he too can be also very direct. My first discussion with him after he took over Nav Air went something like this. LJ, I'm telling you, at Nav Air, I'm telling Nav Air I need readiness and I need speed. Readiness and speed. I'm thinking, got it. Makes sense. And then he continues. For you personally, I need you to be the butt of all my Hornet pilot jokes. <laughs> Got it. Fragile egoed helo pilot. Makes sense. I can do that. More, more, more on that in a bit. Some more thank yous. Father Ray, thank you for being here. Thanks for not only today, but for your influence and your guidance on our family these last three years. We look forward to continuing that journey of faith. Master Chief McKinley, CMC, where are you? He's floating around somewhere. Seeing his smile through the miracle of VTC from a deployed aircraft carrier last year, that smile, I knew I had picked the right CMC for this most important job. To the unsung heroes who put this ceremony together, the band, the color guard, the United States Navy Test Pilot School for hosting, it's always like coming home here. To the FRC Change of Command team for their many, many hours of work, thank you to you all. To the side boys. These are superstar FRC COs and XOs, save one. That one, Midshipman First Class, Matt Zarkowski who is currently stationed with a Hornet squadron in Oceana. And yes, Matt, your dad showed me your selfie video of you in the back of an F-18F Super Hornet doing some tanking. I could see that grin through the mask. You have been bitten by the bug. Well done. Admiral Paul Verastro, thanks for coming down from Philly, Paul. It's been great, and I know you're headed off to Europe. That NABSUP WSS team will never be the same without you. Mark Whitney, my counterpart in uh, shipyards. Uh, thanks, Mark, for, uh, for being here today. Uh, Rear Admiral Jeff Penfield Zoyle, thanks for coming up from Norfolk. I look forward to later next month to honor you and join your team. I've got big shoes to fill, and I'm very excited to be back in the test world. To my fellow flags here at NAV Air, Bam Bam Dara, Mike Moran, uh, Dino Peter Shane, Spanky Morley, and, and Zulu, uh, welcome and thank you. To Dennis West and Todd Balaz, you two have been the greatest mentors for me. I couldn't possibly lead without you. Your guidance, advice, and friendship is something I will cherish forever. To my sister Sarah and her kids, Affectionately known, collectively, to Cat and my kids as The Cousins. Gus is a sophomore at Butler. Olivia just finished high school and will be a freshman at Vanderbilt. Sophie and Amanda, close on their heels. Great to have you here. When I asked our kids earlier this week, hey, what special thing is happening this week? Hint, hint, big ceremony. They yelled out, The Cousins are coming. Exactly right. Your Aunt Kat and I couldn't be more proud of you. I'm especially proud of you leading your mom into the technology of the 21st century. Last night was a great example. Sarah's like me. If, I need, if she needs her iPhone fixed, she gives it to one of her kids. I do the same thing. Last night, Sarah called from BWI at 10.30 p.m. No rental car. She asked me, what do I do? My typical brotherly response, I have no idea. 
About two minutes later, our kids screamed out, they're taking Uber. Exactly right. There's innovation right here in this front row. To my kids, Luke, Aaron, and Kate. They know I mention them in every speech, and I'm sure they're cringing just about now on what I'm about to say. Kids, this time I'll talk about humility. You keep me humble. And that's incredibly important in leadership and in life. You teach me that every day. Three examples. Not too long ago, after three sets of orders in a two and a half year period, they asked me, Dad, are you having a tough time holding a job? <laughs> or after one of them being my unpaid intern for a day on Shadow Day, seeing my desk and summarily giving me an F for organization. It was well deserved. Or my personal favorite under the category, Be Humble Dad, after Todd Balaz and I made the escalator video that Navair put on YouTube, it was reported to us that it was taking off like wildfire. I was so proud of that. I pulled up the video on the computer at home to show Kat and the kids a couple of days after release. Their collective response, Dad, 67 views, that's it? Really? I love you kids, you're the greatest. Cat, you keep everything moving forward. I love you more every day. Two very special guests. We lost Blue Angel number six, Captain Marine, uh, Marine Captain Jeff Coos, two weeks ago. The Navy and Marine Corps team continues to mourn that loss. And the Blue Angels will continue as they always do, thanks to incredibly strong, strong Blue Angel leadership, Zeb and Rita Knott. They are here today. Kat and I met Zeb and Rita 15 years ago. Same apartment, same floor. Zeb is a naval aviator. Not only that, he was the boss of the Blues flying F-11F Tigers as the lead from 1959 to 1961. They bleed navy blue and gold. Zeb and Rita, thank you for your Blue Angel leadership and thank you for being part of our family. To Zark, the best vice commander I could ever have. One of the things I talk about regularly with our COs is my view on leadership. I have to keep things simple. I sum it up with three C's, courage, compassion, and character. Zark, I've watched you succeed with your unstoppable courage in difficult fights. As gigantic challenges arise, I've watched you focus on what might pass by unnoticed to most, with your compassion for the individual in this command. And as for character, the only place any one of us needs to look is right at Zark and Janet's two sons, Matt and Ryan, the perfect reflection of the greatest character of a father, a naval officer, a leader. Zark, I cannot thank you enough. I am your shipmate for life, whenever and wherever you need me. Now for the thought. To the 16,000 sailors, civilians, and contractors of Fleet Readiness Centers represented here today by our headquarters staff and our eight great commanding officers. It was 20 years ago this month, you heard this story a little bit, 20 years ago this month that Kat and I left China Lake after my first Hornet test tour following my time at TPS, class 104, the best class ever. We headed to the depot at North Island. I didn't understand why at the time I was headed to the depot. Seemed a bit off track for a test pilot. All I knew about the depot was that on occasion, we'd deliver a jet there for repair. I perhaps said something about getting that jet out. That tour in 1996 at Depot North Island began my love affair with the mission of naval aviation maintenance and how we support the air boss, the warfighter, the country. I have learned over these 20 years that naval aviation maintenance is truly the greatest team sport on the planet. This community has been courageous enough to let me, a simple Hornet pilot, which of course, generates the response from Admiral Grossglag's simple Hornet pilot is redundant. 
You have allowed to, me to dabble in this world on and off for 20 years. It has been the most rewarding career a Hornet pilot could ever have, and I am sad to leave. And in the same breath, I am turning over the best job in the Navy to an amazingly capable fellow officer and friend, Mike Zirkhausen. Zark and I and the entire FRC workforce have shared many, many challenges together. In the FRCs, we know that each day can feel like time in a boxing ring, that you're surrounded with punches coming in from everywhere. I have the greatest respect for the entire FRC team for that commitment to fight every day, that you're in the ring while others might be outside the ring simply judging. So I leave you with a quote that perhaps might help on some of those tougher days. It has helped me. A quote that was shared with me by Captain John Kemna, one of my many mentors in Naval Aviation Maintenance, just before his change of command and retirement last year at FRC Southeast. The version of, the quote, of this quote is credited to Mother Teresa. People are often unreasonable, irrational, self-centered, Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Thank all of you so very much for being here today. God bless you. God bless the Navy and Marine Corps team. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Will all guests please remain seated for the reading of the orders? I shall now read my orders from Chief of Naval Operations to Rear Admiral Paul Soule. When directed by reporting senior, detach from duty as Commander Fleet Readiness Centers and report for duty as Commander Operational Test and Evaluation Force. I will now read my orders. CNO Order 1056 for Captain Michael Zarkowski, United States Navy. When directed by reporting senior, detach in May 2016 from duty as Vice Commander, Fleet Readiness Centers, and report as Commander, Fleet Readiness Centers. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Mike Zarkowski, Commander, Fleet Readiness Centers. Thank you, Joe. So oddly enough, my first concern as Commander is that Dennis West's back and bladder 
are not in as much pain as he thought they might be by this time when I reached the podium. Thanks, Dennis, for the subtle mentorship letting me know how short you believe the new guy's remarks should be. Good morning, Admiral Shoemaker, Admiral Grosklag. Admiral Sol. Thank you for the kind words. Welcome family, friends, distinguished visitors, guests, and teammates. And of course, all fellow green shirts. It is your support and presence today that really makes this event so special. First, we should thank the Sol family, Kat, Luke, Aaron, and Kate. Thank you for sharing LJ, your dad, with us. You know he works long hours, travels often, and misses so many special events at home. Please know how important he is to our Navy and our country. And please know what you have meant to COMFRC and the Zarkowski family. Admiral Soul, LJ, Herbie, Silver Tongue, and our very favorite Simple Hornet pilot, we are going to miss you, especially on the third Friday of every month when COMFRC provides our monthly production update at the NAE XCOM, during our 3 bs M2EBODs, FMB reviews, and Kate quarterly briefings. Seriously, you were the best boss ever. And I am honored to continue to lead this extremely high-performing command. The numbers speak for themselves. Your leadership has put COMFRC on a steady course. And you did it with style, always leading with humility, compassion, and integrity. You were the right leader in the right place, at the right time. I was fortunate to have you as my boss at FRC Mid-Atlantic and as Vice Commander, and I'm even more fortunate to have you as a mentor and as a friend. Thank you will never be enough. Thank you, Air Boss and Admiral Grosklags for being here today. This country is very blessed to have you both and Lieutenant General Davis, Admiral Manazer, and Admiral Miller on the bridge leading naval aviation. I also want to thank you for your immediate personal guidance, also reminding me, remember, the new guys should not have much to say. This is your first graded evolution on speed. We are timing you. Couple that with the fact that General Davis is conducting a V-22 IRR this afternoon, and both Todd Belize and General Mazziello already have their car engines running, they want to leave in less than nine minutes and head to Northern Virginia to participate in that review. Maz, Todd, I will make sure you launch on time. I'd like to thank my family, Mr. and Mrs. Joe and Mary Ellen O'Hara. We love that you continue to take time to support us. And Celeste and Uncle Paul, familiar faces at milestone events, thank you. My nephew, Captain Mike Melandra, United States Marine Corps, and his bride, Lieutenant Jenny Melandra, United States Navy. Thanks for making the effort today in your busy active duty lives to be here. My sister Karen and her husband Rob, thanks for being here and for bringing mom and dad. Janet and I look forward to many trips with you in the future. Mom and dad, still finding ways to make major events. You have always put your children first, providing love and support. We will always be indebted to you. Thank you. We love you. Dad, happy early Father's Day. You are the best. To our sons, Ryan, our sophomore Nittany Lion, Mom and I cannot be more proud of the man you are becoming. The sky is the limit for you. And then there is the most handsome side boy ever. No, not you, Trent. Our son, Matt, taking a day away from his first class cruise with VFA 37, the Raging Bulls, at NES Oceana, commissioning in Happy Valley less than a year away. Our mission commander, my wife Janet. Simply put, there is no me without you, and there is nothing I have done in my life that is of significance without you. 
You do so many things to include keeping me grounded. In fact, while discussing this tour in the road ahead one night, I might have asked Janet if in her wildest dreams she ever thought we would be here today. And Janet, like only she can do, looked me in the eyes and responded, Honey, you were never in my wildest dreams. <laughs> now please feed the dog. <laughs> Janet, I will always love you. I will always need you. So in the fall of 2015, the Chief of Naval Operations issued his design for maintaining maritime superiority. The Commandant of the Marine Corps released the Frigo, advanced to contact. The NAE was clear on our vision, and NAVAIR issued a set of strategic imperatives. Be ready to fight tonight, and capability and capacity to win in the future. All are in alignment. And as Admiral Grasklag stated when he took command, there is no organization more important to the health of naval aviation than NAVAIR. We all know the profound impact the entire CISCOM has had and continues to have in developing, procuring, and sustaining our weapon systems. And I believe there is no command within NAVAIR or naval aviation more important to readiness than COMFRC. We are at the very center of fleet readiness. In short, even though this is a time of transition, our mission remains the same to provide aircraft ready for tasking. As such, we have complex challenges we must continue to address to support the strategic, strategic imperatives to be ready to fight tonight. COMFRC will continue with our rapid deployment of maintenance planning, sustainment, and execution in all FRCs. It will increase our responsiveness and reduce turnaround time of aircraft down for in-service repair. We will continue working closely with 6 so to become more predictive and measure the right things. The tools and skills at this core are critical chain project management and ILSMS. We will continue to burn down our efforts in burn downing, prioritizing, and responding to component repairs. We have achieved early success deep diving into our constraining issues using drum buffer rope and buffer management tools for level two and level three components. And we will continue utilizing all resources available to COMFRC and NAVAIR to close any gaps between production and comptroller shops. Through accurate forecasting and budget execution, we have matured our relationship with OPNAV and FMB. And we will also continue our focus on training newly hired artisans. We won't stop until we have an apprenticeship training program which will provide structure and a clear track for our blue-collar workforce. To support the second initiative, capability and capacity to win in the future, we must continue to commit the necessary resources to stay the course with Vision 2019. With this vision, the Naval Aviation Force of the future will be able to quickly adapt to emergent maintenance requirements, and the Fleet Readiness Centers will be faster, more agile, more geographically independent, and cost less. We will continue our efforts to formalize a modernization plan across the FRC enterprise to accommodate future capability and capacity. And we will formalize and thoughtfully weave pockets of innovative success throughout the command and enterprise. Pulling two of our commanding officers to the headquarters after their changes of command later this summer will jumpstart this effort. Ladies and gentlemen, readiness remains essential, the essential key to our warfighting proficiency. And together, we will further increase our ability to close the readiness gap. We should feel proud about what we have already done and accomplished in closing that gap and anxious about the work that still needs to be done. I am extremely optimistic about what we will continue to do together. We have alignment and unified leadership at the top. NAVAIR, the TICOM, Fleet Forces Command, COMFRC, NAVSUP, WSS, DLA, OPNAV, Center for Naval Aviation Technical Training, and industry have solid relationships are true teammates and are giving much less thought to who should get the credit. And within COMFRC, we have a solid foundation that has been provided by Admiral Sowell, Dennis West, and previous COMFRC leaders. We have a COMFRC headquarters. That staff is better than it has ever been and continues to find ways to improve value and worth to all fleet readiness centers and all of our stakeholders. We have the very best COs, XOs, and PXOs 
almost all who are in attendance here today. Thank you. We have Command Master Chief McKinley and the most talented CMCs and Maintenance Master Chief Petty Officers. And most importantly, we have the most skilled and dedicated civilian, military, and contractor workforce in the world who have done this before. Maz, Todd, it's about time to head north. So let me close by reading an excerpt from a speech, Citizens in a Republic, by President Theodore Roosevelt. One notable passage of that speech is referred to as the man in the arena. These words have tremendous application to the women and men in COMFRC and across our enterprise fixing for the fight. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while, doing, while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Air Boss, Admiral Grosglags, Com FRC is one of your commands in the arena, and we are aware of our role. Our commitment to you is that we will continue to rise to the challenge and deliver the aircraft, engines, and components necessary to provide the required number of aircraft ready for tasking. Admiral Soule, there are none finer than you. Thanks for handing over a command performing so incredibly well. Fair winds and following seas as you head to OPTEV 4. To Com FRC and our teammates. I am at your service, and I am ready to get to work. Thank each of you for what you have done and will continue to do to support our sailors, Marines, airmen, and soldiers. May God bless our naval aviation family, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Will the guests please stand in military cover while Father Ray Schmidt delivers the benediction. Lord, you are the giver of all good gifts. You promise in your word that the measure with which we measure will be measured back to us, pressed down, overflowing, spilling into the lap of our garments. Grant just that kind of abundant blessing upon the soul and Zarkowski families. We ask that you give these men wisdom to maneuver through this transition with all agility, that you would continue to give them both breastplates as if body armor of righteousness and integrity combined with the hearts of compassion that will enable them to be leaders in the true sense of the word. Give them wisdom that they may discern your will. Grant them conviction of heart and clarity of vision. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Please join Ray Soul and Captain Zarkowski at a reception at the rear of the hangar. Thank you.